Hi, and welcome to Halftime at the Footy. This week we take a look at the rise of women playing Aussie rules football. The once male-dominated sport is attracting a female following among players and spectators. For years, Aussie women have been a part of Australian rules football. Whether it's waking up early on a Saturday or Sunday morning to watch their child play footy, or working in the kiosks serving those warm pies we love to eat. Women have always been great supporters of our national game. Jan Cooper is taking on the boys. She's been the AFL female development manager for the past five years. Jan grew up watching footy and developed a passion for the sport. She later joined the WA Football Commission in a development role before being recruited by the AFL to take charge of female football. She's behind the push in 2009 that saw 80,000 females register to play Aussie Rules and the numbers continue to grow. At this point in time there's over 100,000 and we hope to have 200,000 happening in the next five years so we ha actually hope to have 20% of the population that is playing football are female footballers so, and we're increasing every day. So why are more women joining up? I can only speak on my own experience. Uh, I enjoy it and I, I see a lot of girls, like I said, are very passionate and just want to get involved. It's a fantastic team sport to be a part of and, you know, girls grow up playing and it's an Australian um, lifestyle, the AFL footy, and, you know, girls getting involved and things like that is, you know, absolutely fantastic as far as women's footy are concerned. It's a game that they've always loved, so they've grown up with that family passion for AFL. And they love the physicality. You know, as much as we might not think that it's something that women want to be involved in, that's the first port of call for them. They love the bumping, the shepherding, being able to do that within the rules of the game. There are now pathways in place, beginning with all girls Auskick through to seniors and a talent pathway to match that of the AFL. Well, we wanted to give our most talented footballers a, a greater challenge rather than just having a medal around their neck. So for a week, they spend that time in Melbourne with the high performance people from the AFL. So last year it was people like Jason McCartney, Jason Mifsud, people from Melbourne Football Club, Brad Green, Chris Connolly, um, their coaching staff. And they spend the week learning more about football, immersing themselves in the game, and then it culminated in a, a curtain raiser prior to Melbourne versus Collingwood. So there was 15,000 people in the G by the time the girls' game had finished. Last month, the national championships were held in Adelaide. WA didn't come home with the trophy, losing to Victoria in the grand final. But there were celebrations throughout the WA camp, with midfielder Kirby Bentley winning the Debbie Lee medal for best and fairest throughout the competition. I was surprised. There's a lot of talent going through Australia right now and the competition is a lot better than two years ago. So, yeah, it's a huge honour. Kirby's busy, as when she's not on the netball court, she's playing for East Fremantle and is in the All-Australian team. It's just enjoyment, um, going out and playing and showing what you got. I, I play different to a lot of players. Um, I sell a bit of candy without even realising what I'm doing. I think I sell it to my teammates sometimes, which is pretty funny, but, yeah, just enjoying the game and, and getting out there and being involved. What does sell a bit of candy mean? Well, I'm an Aboriginal girl, so Indigenous people, oh, it's a bit of black magic, so pull the ball out to the left and everyone follows and you go to the right, so yeah, everyone seems to follow it. <laughs> <laughs> With the championships over, can we expect a national female competition similar to the AFL's? Well, we're hoping to do a trial in, in the next couple of years, so maybe 2013, 2014. It might look like two Victorian teams, one from Western Australia, South Australia and Queensland. And we'll do a trial because we don't yet know what travel and, you know, such a challenging competition will do on women's bodies. There's no data around that. So we want to trial that first and get the player welfare right before moving into, hopefully, a national televised competition. Since being in the role... Jan has found one of the main difficulties is convincing others about women's passion and commitment to the game. 
I think probably if, if you could call it a challenge, the main um, frustration has been convincing people within the industry that it's something that girls and women want to be involved in because we've always had roles such as the kiosk, the orange cutters, the Guernsey washers, you know, supporting our men in the game. But now because we actually want to be umpires, coaches and players, it, for some fellows it's not, it doesn't sit easy with them. So that's been the most challenging thing is convincing them that women are passionate about playing the game and to try and provide those opportunities for them within the system. With a goal of 200,000 players in five years and a national competition by 2020, this women's league could certainly take on the AFL boys at their own game. The Australian Sports Commission have given us some funding, so we've been able to set up new junior and youth girls competitions around the country. And so, yeah, our, we're the fastest growing sport in Australia. Yeah.